Hey, welcome to Shrink Chicks. Welcome to Shrink Chicks. Where do we start? What? Oh, reject. Was that rejecting of us? That was rejecting of us. Did you feel rejected by my difficulty starting? If you couldn't tell by our hints, we're going to talk about rejection today. Rejection. Okay, here's the thing. I have to do a disclaimer. I was just talking to Nikki about this before, while you were in the bathroom before we started recording, which is one of the difficult parts with any topic we do when people write in questions is like, and I know we've sort of touched on this before, is that like the majority of what people are asking is, how do I not feel this? Yeah. <laughs> how do and I our not? answer is, you got to feel it. You got to feel it. You right? got to so feel like, it. So the disclaimer is that no matter how many times you listen to this episode or how much therapy you go to, you cannot take away feelings but we can talk about what makes rejection so painful and maybe how it hurt a little bit less but at the end of the day shit hurts life hurts that's where we're at that's the disclaimer for the episode also rejection like any emotion that everyone doesn't want to feel is a natural human emotion and I think that there's you know, a, I think a common feeling that's coupled re- with rejection is embarrassment. Okay. And I personally, can I tell a story literally from this morning? Yeah, please. Oh, my God. Funny you bring up embarrassment because I think embarrassment is one of the worst emotions. Specifically, I mean, for me, I know, but I think it is, like, one of those emotions that, like, really shut us down. Especially if you have, like, some childhood, like, stuck points, we'll call them, of, like, of, like um, embarrassing experiences. So this morning. And who doesn't have a childhood embarrassing experience? Yeah, like the first time you farted in front of everyone. Right. Or when you peed yourself in class or you pooped yourself or you pooped yourself or you remember uh if someone would like throw up in class they would like throw sawdust on it (laughs) (laughs) do you remember why weren't they cleaning that up i'm not sure yeah why would they throw sawdust on it and the smell, right? Also, where'd you get the sawdust from? Is that just like something Wait, also, they had I liked in the that Somebody took the effort to have the sawdust, but not to clean it up. Well, I, there has to be a <laughs> reason for that, right? How could that possibly take less time than simply cleaning it up? It doesn't make sense to me. Also, do you remember cleaning your desks with shaving cream? I'm sorry. Did what? you not do that? Did you? No one did that. Okay. Why were if, you cleaning your desk with shaving cream? I don't know. I guess it was like a – it wasn't just me. It wasn't like, hey, guys, <laughs> I brought my shaving cream in. I have to clean my desk. No. They gave us all shaving cream to, like, clean our desk. Um, no. You don't remember? Okay. If anyone is listening to this episode and you cleaned your desk with shaving cream, please reach out. Or did I have a fever dream? Hard to say. Keep going with your story. Let's just bypass this entire thing. <laughs> Keep on going. I want to hear more about the shaving okay, cream. Sure, okay, sure. so this morning, um, uh, we take my daughter to a trampoline park, like one of those fucking like sky zone things, right? I buy the tickets last night. They have toddler time when it opens every morning for kids under five. Really fabulous, right? Okay, I go online. I buy it last night. 9.15 arrival. Perfect. We got to record in the afternoon. Okay, we show up. And as I pull in, I'm like, wow, there's literally no one in this parking lot. A little weird, but... I check my ticket again, 9.15, right day, whatever. Walk in, the guy's like, we don't open until 10. I was like, but I bought the ticket for the $13.99 at 9.15 this morning. He checks it. He's like, wow, you're right. It's a website error. But for some reason, I was embarrassed, probably because I'm then like sitting there with my fucking thumb up my ass with my toddler. Right, that's what you do when you wait. And this guy's basically just like staring at me like, right. Sorry, Don't lady. Know like what this to tell is, you. Yeah, right. He's like, yeah. What's he supposed to do? Like, there's fucking. He doesn't have any control over this. But for some reason, I felt embarrassed, and then I noticed that I got like a little bit snippy with my partner, and it was like embarrassment was the emotion that I was trying mm. to push down with irritability. Did you feel rejected at all in that experience? Like, oh, I'm here. This is so. Also, you took such time to like plan this out. Yes. Right? You really thought about it. You said uh, you bought the tickets beforehand. Yes. The night before, you go in. You're ready. I'm sure Millie is pumped. Fucking pumped all morning long, right? And you're probably in your trampoline, you know, (laughs) gear. What does that look like? No one knows. 
Um, and then you get there and you're ready to go. Yes. Did that feel rejecting for you that he said, listen, you can't come in? Yeah, it did. It totally felt rejecting and it felt embarrassing. So I think it is interesting that these two emotions we're talking about together. Because so that's my most recent experience with rejection and embarrassment. Right. What's and, yours? Oh, God. Do you have a recent rejection? You know, I push my emotions so deep down that it's hard <laughs> to remember. But <laughs> I think, I, you know, I was thinking about this and I think – kind of like what you're saying that I think when we talk about rejection we think of it more in like larger things like I got rejected from a job or I got yes. rejected from you know I went on a date and they didn't like yeah. me or whatever but I think rejection also so often happens in like very small moments with people remember that date I set you up with is <laughs> do I to talk remember about it <laughs> does he remember it I don't think so that was the weirdest date I had ever been on. Did you feel rejected? No, I felt confused. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed cool when we volunteered together. And he was also attractive. Hot. <laughs> but <laughs> it was a weird experience. So no, I would say that wasn't a okay. time in which I felt rejected. All right. Just confused, I would say. <laughs> Went back to Emily and said, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what are you thinking? My bad. <laughs> Last time she set me up on a date. And then I've never tried again. But but no, I think I think we think about it in like larger yeah. ways. But I think it's so often it can happen in like small moments in conversation. Right? If you like bring something up or if you, you know, if you make a joke and no one laughs. Yeah, you feel so shut down. Shut down, rejected, yes. embarrassed. Like yep. that was stupid. Why did I even say that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> right? mm -hmm. And so I think rejection happens so much more than we recognize it. Yeah. Um, and and embarrasses embarrassment is often coupled with it because it, and shame I think in a lot of ways because we feel you know I think we often feel like because I was rejected I did something wrong, right? Or I did something shameful or. And I think it, it can go back to kind of like this biological uh, basis of rejection where we feel safer when we're connected to people. Mm -hmm. We feel safer in groups. Um, and so rejection almost gives us this sense and, uh, you know, sends our brain these signals of like, you are not safe. In this if you're instance. not full, if you're not accepted, if you're not so accepted, rejected, if you're yeah. not connected, and and when you're being rejected, your brain is saying, "Oh, you're not safe," mm -hmm. when really you are safe. Well, it's also interesting because now a lot of research has come out about um, folks that are uh, neurodivergent mm -hmm. and rejection sensitivity. So specifically, if someone who is on the autism spectrum or is ADHD or ADD, you can have specific rejection sensitivity. And that's something to think about, too, for yourself. Like, is that something that you struggle with? Yeah. There is um, – I watched a TED Talk, and I, I, we will attach his name to whatever promo we do for this. How annoyed do you think Nikki gets every time episode we say where we're like, like oh, we're going to add this thing on, and, like, she has to do it. I know. By we, we mean <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Thank so what you. you should remember is the backbone of everything is Nikki. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So Nikki's going to add this on. Thank you. <laughs> love of our lives um but i watched this ted talk on this man that created rejection therapy okay have, have i told you uh, yes and you just get rejected all day so long, right? yeah he made a plan exposure be therapy because he had such rejection sensitivity he created this exposure therapy for himself where every single day he made it a point to get rejected like he would ask questions of people where he knew that the answer was going to be no like what, drive me to Antarctica right now? Like what's like a guaranteed no? Um, I think he went to like a burger. I, I might be botching this, but like went to a burger, you know, a burger shop and asked for like something ridiculous there. Like a salmon. Like a salmon. Exactly. Was like oh, like can something I that would be like, uh, no. And yeah. like this is fucking McDonald's. Yeah, okay. exactly. But so, you have a filet o fish. So, <laughs> but it's basically a filet o fish. Have you ever gotten Real a ones, filet o fish? No. Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say I haven't gotten the filet fish So your answer is yes? <laughs> I think that I... I You've would... never just never tried the filet fish You know, fish, <laughs> I wouldn't say is like my number one go-to fast food. I feel like I've tried everything on every fast food menu. You know? You know, I, I mean, listen, to each his own, I'm not going to reject you. 
in this moment because to each his own you're rejecting the filet fucking of fish i know i'm sorry fish (laughs) so sorry fishy so okay so he goes and he like sets it up so he has rejection all the time yes so he creates it for himself exposure therapy so after a while when you get rejected that much you're no longer fearful of rejection so that's where i think we we should dive into like fear of rejection a little bit well i think you really started to get to it of like what does it say about me if I am rejected, if this person, this job, this fucking whatever, I mean, like, I feel like I can feel this, like, from my child. I feel like a lot of moms can feel this. It's like, we're often rejected by our kids. Like, you're, like, bullied all day long um, by your own child. And so, like, this feeling of, like, what does this say about me if this happens? Yes. Uh, you know, when I'm around children and they're, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, all nervous that they're, like, not going <laughs> to like me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're, like... <laughs> You know, you go up to the kid and you're like, hey, and sometimes they like start crying and you're like, shit. You're like, I did something. This, yes. I did something wrong. We're like, no, they're a child. They're allowed yes. to have whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it is has nothing to do with you. Exactly. Yes. It is so easy to take that. I mean, like with cats, if you're a cat owner, cats reject you constantly. I feel like owning a cat is just daily exposure therapy to rejection. It totally. I mean, that is why I got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if that was the reason I got a cat? I feel like that's a great reason to have a cat. Yeah, I mean, fair, fair. Right? Yeah. Okay, wait. So it goes into actually, we had a bunch of listener questions, and one of them was, like, about exactly what we're talking about right now. Um, So I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so afraid of rejection that I don't even try how to overcome overcome this fear. So I think that they asked, like, what are you so afraid of? Right? Like, deep, deep down, does this mean I am unlovable? Does this mean I am unworthy? Does this mean that if I felt rejection from my parents, I, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like whatever this is on like a very deep level, that is how you start to say like when I overcome this fear. If I can say that it's a feeling, not a fact. One rejection does not mean that you are unloved by the entire universe. So part of this is also like, I think like reality checking your catastrophic thoughts. Totally. And I think to also ask yourself, what's the cost of not trying? If you're able to weigh what the cost is of you not putting yourself out there, right? So whether that is, okay, I really want this job, but I'm too afraid that they're going to reject me, and so I'm not even going to try. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to stay in this job that maybe I'm unhappy in or um, maybe that doesn't value me. And so the cost there is that you're not putting yourself out there for an opportunity that might be really, really incredible for you. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Or dating, right? If you're not putting yourself out there in dating because of the fear of rejection. Somebody had written it about like um, coming over the f- – uh, overcoming the fear of rejection when you're actually anxious, anxiously attached. Can I speak today? Mm-hmm. And I can't really speak any day. <laughs> um, but I think that's part of it. Like if you experienced early childhood rejection from your caregivers, I do think it makes you highly aware. And also you do then so much reading between the lines and like reading energy and overlooking stuff, jumping to conclusions, like all the safety procedures that you go through to make yourself safe is then very hard to bring into adulthood because you developed these very specific survival techniques. And what do we say is that the things that helped you survive often do not help you thrive. Because I think when you are a child, being rejected isn't safe right like being rejected now as an adult you are still safe Mm -hmm. but your survival depends on the love and care that you have from your caregivers and so if you if the love that you were receiving was conditional and you were often rejected by your parents for something that you were doing or caregivers for something you were doing or saying then you did have to be highly aware of being rejected because that meant that you weren't safe in the connection that you had with your caregivers. Mm-hmm. So there's something to be said about if, if you're listening to this episode and you're saying, wow, I like am very sensitive to rejection. I am very fearful. To dig into that earl- those early childhood experiences to say, well, did that is that coming from anywhere else? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. might that have started for me? And I think it also then goes into like how much of your worth and a sense of self is put on other people. Because if I am that jilted, is jilted a word? It feels like it is. Like when you said it, I felt great about it. <laughs> Start with a J or a G? I think a G. No? Nikki, do you know? I'm looking it up. 
Yeah. Okay. Um. Someone's in it. Jilted. Yeah. Like if right. If I'm that J or G. If I'm Jay that well. jilted by. <laughs> this is like the most ADHD episode That's we've okay. done in a while. That's all right. Doing um, great. If I'm that jilted by someone's rejection, how much worth was I putting into their opinion? And their belief about me. Because there's also a lot of reasons we get rejected, right? If I don't get a job, usually it's just because there was a better candidate. Or somebody's son applied. You know, like, (laughs) there was nepotism, right? (laughs) Like, it often has, like, very little to do with me specifically. And more about, like, a larger contextual thing, right? And that, that is so important. Something that we often forget is that rejection is not personal to you. Right? We're so not like, that special. We're not that special, but but <laughs> it's so easy to feel like that. Like the focus has to be on like something you did. There was something in your teeth. Your breath stunk. You said something wrong. <laughs> Everything's virtual now. Your breath probably can stink right. and it's fine. And then you're fine. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, and this is how I often describe it, is that you and if think about you and your friend and like the people that you're attracted to, you're attracted to like different people. Right, just because one person isn't attracted to you or they're not connected to you doesn't mean another person will not be attracted or connected to you. Mm-hmm. And it's not about you personally; it's about preferences. Okay, but like, all right, and that's really easy for us to say. So let's go like a little bit deeper about the emotional thing. So yes. I want to, I can talk about my own, but I want to ask you right now and put yes. you on the spot, please. Tell me about. I don't know what- why I said please. <laughs> please hurt me on camera (laughs) while recorded clearly Um, i've gotten very used to this right okay so uh, if you think back it was most likely college because that's when we were all very dying to be loved um and the time that you felt the most rejected by a romantic interest it might have been after college okay and i had a lot of them (laughs) what happened so what was it like right so it's really easy for us to say this but how did it feel it felt horrible i think a lot of it when i was dating after college you were around during that time Mm -hmm. and um you know i think i would be in situationships where they weren't necessarily turning into relationships where i really wanted them to yeah um but it was so clear that it wasn't moving in that direction but you did you keep trying to make it of course <laughs> you're like no no, no because no, for some like reason you feel like you have more control over the situation like yes. you could do if i change something or say something or do something then maybe they'll love me enough to be in a relationship with me yeah when really you have all of the answers inside of you yeah there's a reason why you are so anxious that the person's not texting you over and over and over again. There's a reason why you don't have that secure base. And there's, you know, like there's like small rejections that are happening in a situ in these situations. Like daily. <laughs> daily. And so that's so painful. But we've talked about this before on the podcast, the um pursuer distancer dynamic and when someone is distancing and pushing you away all you want to do is pursue because you're like oh the more I pursue the more I'm going to gain control over this so moral of the story is it is horribly painful it's horrible I mean it fucks you up like I do think right it's just really easy for us to say here and say it's not personal but that feeling is absolutely devastating like I can remember it was right before I met my now husband and I was, like, hooking up with this guy. You know who it is. I but, do yes, know yeah. who it is. I was hooking up, and I, like, really wanted to work out. And, like, it was just, he was not, this dude was not making me his girlfriend. And I was, like, <laughs> I was going to, like, try anything. You, right. You keep trying. Yes, you just keep trying. I'm, like, if I was cuter or flirtier, or, like, all of a sudden, like, I, like, like, I care about sports. Sure. I don't fucking know, right? Like, I wouldn't, like, <laughs> care about sports. <laughs> I would have, like, cut off an arm, probably, for this person to, like, make me his girlfriend. Um, in retrospect, why? I, I forget if I talked about this on the podcast or we talked about it outside of the podcast that I was dating this guy and he was very smart and I pretended that yes. I was reading lots of books. But you were not. I was not. You do not. No. <laughs> So, like, that's the thing is, like, you just can lose yourself entirely. Like, when you start to become highly activated, I'm about to get rejected. And I think the same thing can happen in work. I think it can happen in any relationships, right? Like, you often, there's, like, a few different things that happen. One, you can start to overcompensate. Hello, Emily. And then there's another one we can start to totally shut down, Jennifer. Hello. (laughs) 
right? And then for some people, they act out in other ways, right? Like everyone has these different things. I just know for me, I go straight to overcompensation. Like I will be the perfect person. <laughs> but I think, and, and I also, I, I think it's a way to, that we try to protect ourselves from rejection. We believe that if I do something different, then I'm going to have control over this. I'm going to make sure that I don't get rejected by changing myself completely to make sure that this person doesn't reject me. Where in yeah. the end, we don't ha- actually have control over whether we're rejected or not. Yeah. And so that's where we move into the idea that we can't take rejection away. We have to learn how to cope with it. Okay. So does fear of rejection relate to imposter syndrome? I mean, I guess it could. I think they're inter- I think they can be intertwined. I think I think when you have more imposter syndrome, there's more fear of rejection because you believe that you're not worthy enough to be accepted. Well, I think also that rejection is confirmation that people found out that you're a fraud. Yes. And that's the fear, right? That I'm the imposter anyway. And so then if you get rejected, you like feel like that. And sometimes and, and when you have that imposter syndrome, that fear of rejection, you're so much more nervous, right? You you have so much less of an ability to really be connected to yourself and be yourself and so i think that sometimes it it ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy where we do get rejected yeah. because we're not as connected to ourselves yep uh-huh uh-huh Oof. um uh, why do you think rejection stays so much longer than acceptance we in oh because we internalize it so quickly did you answer that? i didn't write that but so that's, is that part of the question no i think that's part of, i think that's we internalize rejection so quickly oh. as opposed to And I think, you know, this happens with a lot of painful emotion is that there's a reason why it sticks so strongly. And it's, you know, I think a part of it is because we want to protect ourselves from that pain. And so if we remember it, then then we can protect ourselves more easily. Whereas like when when, you know, emotions that are happening to us that feel good, we're just like, okay, great. Like there's no reason to protect yourself or remember it as much because Mm -hmm. we don't necessarily have to armor ourselves. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Hit me. Um, I reject your question. If you keep getting rejected, is that a sign that you need to change something about yourself? I don't think it's a sign you need to change something about yourself, but you can say, do I think that, am I hearing feedback, right? If somebody tells me, will you get totally blacked out on the first date well you should probably fucking take a look at that right like so like, like the if, date you set me up with <laughs> like the date i set you up with i'm sorry what's good you know you think if someone's like at a volunteer thing with you right, that they're that like that pretty stable that. right Whoops. that's fair that's fair um so i do think right like if you keep getting feedback right will you never answer your phone call or you're always you talked about your ex on the entire date right like if you're getting some type of feedback or you're noticing some type of pattern then i think you absolutely should change it I think also sometimes we also live in a dating world that is like fucking conveyor belt style. Like it's unbelievable the amount of dates. No, but no other generation went through this. Like that you could date, like fi- go on 15 dates a fucking month. Incredible. Right? So like you're just going to experience way more rejection than our parents did because they just married like the same person from their town. You know what? I got right? stuck. I got, <laughs> yes. I got stuck when you said, um, talk about your ex on the date yeah so i'm thinking about if someone talked about their ex on the date i'd be so interested i'd be like tell me more what happened in the relationship okay yeah but like do you think guys are interested if we're talking about a heterosexual relationship right Uh, probably not unless they're therapists that's true right right so i do think so i think part of it right like so you have to say like okay like is there a pattern here for what's happening in these relationships do i notice that it is something to do with it by giving fe- getting feedback and you can take that into consideration sometimes i think rejection is like a really good thing like there is times okay right like we're you and i are in a position of power that we own a business so like we have to reject people for jobs and that's painful too. It's it's a painful being the person doing it. And I'm sure it's very painful being on the other side of it. And also, I know that there's times that we have said no to job applicants and they end up in a place that's way better for them. Yeah. So like I do think that like oftentimes if like we're having to say no to someone, like it is because they wouldn't be the right fit here. It's like that quote, uh, rejection is think about rejection as redirection. Wow. Who said that? Definitely not me. <laughs> but we could pretend. So I do I do think that's part of it, right? So like, yes, could I change study for this? Or do I notice that I keep going after the same type of partner and maybe it's actually not the right fit for me? Oof. 
That's, I mean, that's, that yeah. is an important thing to consider. And, and this, I love this question. Sorry, I was, I was focusing on the that's questions. That's fine. How to get closure when the other person won't tell you why you're being rejected? Mm. I like this question because I think so often that it's so easy to focus on that of like, I need to know why I'm getting rejected so that I can fix it so that I can keep myself from getting rejected again, right? And, and we tend to turn outwards and say like, I need to know why, I need to know why, that's how I can get closure as opposed to turn inwards and say, I might never know why I was rejected. That might never happen. Also, they might not even know why, yeah. right? They might not have a clear picture. Maybe it just wasn't a connection for them. Yeah. But well, it's, I mean, it is a funny thing. Even thinking about like hiring people is like yeah. we've had people that reach out to us and are like, hey, like what can I ask why you didn't choose me and why you went with another candidate? And sometimes it has like literally nothing to do with them. It's just that there was only one spot open. Yeah. And there was just someone else who fit it better. Yeah, it, truly. And and that's the and same thing with dating, right? Yeah. That like you can connect with someone, but sometimes you connect with someone else even more. And sometimes you might connect with someone, but there might be certain things that you're not connecting with. You know, there's might be certain things that are missing for you. Um, and you, on the other end of it, might feel like everything's there in the other person, but it doesn't necessarily protect you from being rejected by the other person. Mm -hmm. And we so often look for, like, I need to know why, I need to know why, so that I can protect myself from this happening again where you might meet someone who does really connect with you and says, you know, you encompass everything that I feel connected to as opposed to you need to change this about you, you need to change this about you. Yeah. So if you're asking yourself that question, I would recommend looking inward and saying, well, you know, I was rejected. How do I nurture myself through this? Right. Mm -hmm. This is painful. How do I nurture myself through this rejection as opposed to needing this external validation and then feeling like I have to change myself in order to protect myself from further rejection? Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard to get over rejection from an ex? Oof. Well, why is it hard to get over anything? Right. Like, OK, so this is a you'll hear a lot. We're like, well, when I broke up with them, I just moved on the next week. What you have to remember is when you make the decision to end it with someone, you started grieving months before. When you, you never just like decide that fucking day you're going to break up with someone, unless maybe there was like some type of dramatic event or cheating or something like that. Sure, maybe. But for the most part, if it's like, if you're starting to think about ending with someone, you've been thinking about it for months or weeks. So you already started grieving. As opposed to when somebody breaks up with you, that's when the grieving often starts in. Now, sometimes you start to have an inkling of it or you've been having conversations or different things start to happen, but it's a very different like start to finish grieving process of who's the initiator of the breakup. I think there's a little bit of betrayal that comes in that too, right? Because if you're the one who's rejected in the relationship or someone breaks up with you, then you're thinking back to like, okay, well, how long have you been thinking about breaking mm -hmm. up with me, right? Like how long have you internally been rejecting me up until this point where in my mind we were on the same page? And so I think that's a whole other layer of it to process of like, I really had this trust in the relationship that is now broken because I can recognize that you were grieving this way before um, you know, you said that you were madly in love with me and then broke up with me a month later. Yeah. What's the meaning of that? And so I think there's so, as you're saying, so much grieving that has to happen and then processing that rejection. And it, bottom line is it is hard. No, it is. I mean, that's the thing is like, it's really easy for us to sit here and say like, it's not personal, but like it feels fucking horrible and like, this is a horrible emotion to sit in it's also you get so used to like a routine with someone being connected to someone and it is such a transition yeah to go from being in a relationship to not being in a relationship especially when it wasn't in your control i've heard people talk a lot before about rejection like with their in-laws mm. Right? Have you heard about, like, you know, I feel like a yes. lot of people feel like they have. it's so common. Well, and it goes back to, unfortunately, unmet expectations. A lot of times, like, that's what rejection is also about, right? It's like, I had an expectation of what this was going to look like, whether it's about getting the job, getting married, their in-laws, whatever the fuck it is, right? And when it comes crashing and burning down or it doesn't work out that way, 
it feels very personal and very much like rejection. I also think a question to ask yourself is like how much, I think this is maybe out of left field, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm thinking about rejection sensitivity and how often we might feel rejected in situations or our interpretation of situations where we, in which we feel rejected. And I think something to ask yourself too is how often are you rejecting yourself? Mm. Right? How often inside your own mind are you saying things that are actually rejecting yourself, whether it's your emotions, whether it's um, how you see yourself, body image? How often are you rejecting yourself and what do those words look like internally? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. just came up for me. And no, that's I like why that. It's out of left field. Um, uh, hey, let's do a Dear Em and Jen. I'm ready. All right. Dear Em and Jen. I'm always concerned about how others feel. Such an empath, like every person listening to this podcast. Um, <laughs> such an empath. And I worry about making people in my life feel rejected when I set boundaries with them. How do I overcome this fear so that I can honor myself and my needs and not constantly be worried about making them feel rejected by me? So I think part of that is you need to change your mindset about what a boundary is. A boundary is not about hurting other people. But probably for much of your life, that's actually, especially for really highly sensitive, em uh, empathetic, very feeling people, they have only often set boundaries, sometimes in a passive aggressive or harsh way. So I'm wondering if there's been times in the past that your boundaries were about pushing somebody away. And so how do you shift your mindset about truly, truly what a boundary is for and why? And I also wonder if, you know, if boundaries are new to you, yeah, that it also means that maybe for the first time you're thinking about your own need, you're putting your own needs first, or maybe so often you have been putting other people's needs first. There's a reason why you have spent so much time putting other people's needs first, and I wonder if it was this fear of they're going to feel rejection. I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to hurt them. Um, and so I think that that might come up, just as we're saying, there's uh, a point where you have to say that might still come up. It doesn't, just because that fear is coming up, doesn't mean it's necessarily true that they're mm -hmm. feeling rejected, right? And so to meet that and say, listen, it's okay that, that I am feeling for this person, um, that I want them, I want, I want them to still feel connected to me, but boundaries are a way to stay connected to someone in a healthy way. And so for, for maybe the first time in your relationships, you're honoring yourself at the same time you're honoring the other person. And so in the end, you're honoring your relationship. And, and can, I'm also wondering if you've set boundaries with people before and they've made it about rejecting and hurting them. Right. And if, if this is your first time, we talk about this a lot in relationships, that people in your life also have to adjust to this new, your new ability to set these boundaries where they might not be used to it. Also might give you some information about your relationships. Are there people in your life who can respect your boundaries? And are there people in your life who can't, right? Or they are pushing back or they're saying, you're really hurting my feelings by setting these boundaries, right? And so it might alter your relationships a little bit and that can be scary. It can be horrifying, right? Because like, what if I set these boundaries and then people reject me? Right. And that's all of our fears, right? We end up alone, right? I get dismissed because I did this thing and that's often why many of us end up with this overcompensation behavior. I do not want to be left behind. I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to be pushed away. Wow. Should we end it on that? I think that was a great place to end it. It's a little bit morbid. That's okay. The people might want to some like hope. A, like some hope. Okay. Let's give them some hope. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Rejection's going to happen. It's going to. It's going to happen just like any other uncomfortable emotion. Yeah. But the more comfortable you get with uncomfortable emotions, the more you're going to be able to smooth sail throughout this life. How was that? That was really good. Thank you. I really like that. I am a fucking poet. You really fucking are. <laughs> All right. 
Thank you for listening to today's episode of Shrink Tricks. We hope you did not feel rejected by it by any means. Um, we love you. We always ask you to rate, review, subscribe, follow an Apple podcast. Check us out anywhere you um, listen to your podcast. You can also watch us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Meet with one of our amazing clinicians at thetherapygroup.com. Anything to stay connected. As always, we love you. And to grow yourself, you got to know yourself. We'll see you next week. Thank you.